here we go with day 11 of the Secret Spirits Scotch Whiskey Advent Calendar, 6th edition. And this is going to be day number 11. I'm not going to waste any time saying anymore. I'm just going to grab this little bottle here and I'm going to open it. Pour it into a nice clean Glen Cairn right here. And proceed with the festivities. Okay. We got some bubbles around the edge there. That's a good thing. Or it's a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. It would tell me that this has a high ABV or high alcohol by volume. And I'm going to bring it around a few times and let the liquid creep up the sides of the glass. And then we can have a look and see what kind of legs we got. Is this one worth lifting the skirt or not? Let's see. Oh. Looks like it just left some droplets on the side. It's like the inside of this glass is slippery. It happens sometimes. I know I washed it thoroughly, but th these ones just sheet right down. <clears throat> There's no sticking to the side of the glass here. I don't know what that means. Ah. Right away I'm getting dark fruits. I'm getting prunes, I'm getting figs, I'm getting dates, I'm getting raisins, I'm getting red fortified wine. <laughs> this might be the first of its kind in the in the calendar. This is pointing me to port casks. That sweetness, that dark fruit sweetness. The sherry is usually drier. It smells good. Very good. I like this. What's underneath the port and or sherry? One thing can, that we can rule out is peat. I'm getting no peat on this. I'm digging deep below that, <coughs> that wine finish or that port finish. Raisins, the ones that used to come in those red box in boxes with the with the girl with the black hair on the box. I think they called it Sun Made. Those go back to my childhood, back in the sixties. I remember those. We had these tiny little boxes. They were only about that high, and about so wide and so thick yeah and my mother used to get a whole bag full of them and every time she wanted to give me a treat she gave me a, a little red box of these sun-made raisins oh this is, this is delicious it's <clears throat> it has some some toffee and caramel notes creeping in from underneath that uh, that thick syrupy wine, fruity, 
shall we call it an overcoat this is wunderbar I really can't get much else on the nose because that that uh, if it's port that port just dominates Seems to me like it's going to be quite chewy too. The alcohol by volume, I don't know. I'm going to have to taste it. Because they just sheet right down. They, they're just gone. Gone. That's a lovely nose. But I can't get anything new out of it. If, if anything, it's the wine is or the fruits are fading a little bit and getting a little more dry and becoming darker at the same time. It's rich, very rich. Okay, let's see if I get anything, any nuances on the taste that I don't get on the nose. Because the nose is beautiful as it is. It covers up the distillery character. It's all about the maturation here. It's all about the, the previous contents of the barrels and or butts or pipes or barriques, whatever kind of barrels they used. Maybe I'll get closer when I taste it. Ooh. Ooh. High ABV. ABV so high that I don't get much taste, but I do get a coating all around inside my mouth of this, of this, um, you could almost call it berry juice. It's like berry juice. It's like a raspberry, strawberry, blueberry, blackberry juice coating the insides of my mouth. I had a gulp of water and it still seems to be there. Wow. Love that nose as it is, but I'm going to have to add some water. Another little, ah, oh, still mouth-watering. I'm going to give it a little sip. Now, oh. another little cautious sip mixed with lots of saliva. I'm getting loads and loads and loads of fruit fruit and berry and that that is a proper finish i think it's port sherry would be drier this has a thick viscous um syrupy mouthfeel once more. Mm. Just as I was making to make that pull, I was getting chocolate up my nose.
Yeah, I'm getting some chocolate up my nose. It's a like that uh, reminds me of kosher milk chocolate and I haven't had kosher milk chocolate since I was about eight years old perhaps there was a, a kosher section in the uh, supermarket where my mother used to shop and on occasion she would pick up some of these kosher chocolates I don't know why we're not Jewish or anything but she'd pick up these kosher chocolates and I think it said Lieber on the label and they would often dry out I don't know if they dry out because that's their nature or they dry out because they've been on the shelf so long that they would dry out but they were quite a dry chocolate and this Now I'm not getting the chocolate anymore. I'm getting port. <laughs> port, 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 port. If this is not port, then I don't have enough experience with port. I need to get some more. That's one thing that this Advent calendar is teaching me more than the one last year. It's an education because it's teaching me about things I never have tasted before and uh, variations on a theme that I have never had before and maybe will never have a chance to try again. And never have I had such a rich and fruity nose as this with dark fruits, but they're not, they're ripe, yes, but they're not dried out. These are exuberant, they are ripe, but they are not dried out. They are not, they are alive. The fruit notes in this. Oh, let's try again. Okay, I get the juicy dark fruits, not to be confused with juicy fruit, but juicy dark ripe fruits, berries, uh, thick chewy mouthfeel, high ABV, probably in the 54 range, I don't know for sure. I'm going to add some water now, see if I can get any changes happening, maybe a little more. I think it can take a lot, so I'm gonna give it a lot. One full heaping spoonful. I'm sure this can take it. I think it's a high enough ABV. The question is, what will it smell like and taste like now? Will I get less fruit and a little more chocolate? Will I get less chocolate? I doubt that I'll get more fruit. This is a, like syrupy. Never have I had one that syrupy before. Oh. The fruits are still there, but they're morphing. They're not as thick and thick and syrupy as they were not nearly as concentrated. Still very lovely after a whole spoonful. At least now I'll be able to take a bigger gulp. What happens to, what are we getting for legs now, if any? I don't know. The 
It's as if the inside of this glass was greased with Pam, or if it was Teflon coated, it just sheets right down like, like you wouldn't believe. Maybe there's Teflon in the whiskey. Look, it's gone right away. They're gone, leaving a few drops stuck to the side. But all those bubbles at the beginning and the initial burn when I first took a sip pointed out that this is no, this is no 40 percenter. Okay, let's give it a Mmm. Ah. Oh. After that whole spoon of water, now on the palate, this is luxurious. It's not quite so syrupy thick, but I'm getting a full coating. My, the entire inside of my mouth, including the tongue and the sides and the palate and everything, is this delicious fruity berry I can't get the word extravaganza perhaps it coats everything and it hangs on and the finish is still fruity fruity dark fruits um, figs and dates, berries. It's still making my mouth water. It's hanging on. It's coating the sides. It's coating the mouth all over. The cask that was used for this has taken away all the flavor that I can get from the distillery, distillery character. I will have a couple more pulls of it naturally because it's so pleasant. This is a beautiful dram. Oh, wait. Wait, I'm getting a, a bit of an oak tone there. I distinctly... No. A little bit of oak, just a sousson, and it was gone. There is some caramel butterscotch under that, under that, those heavy fruits. I don't think I'm going to add any more water because this is just heavenly as is. No idea what this is, no idea what region it's from. I'm going to just hazard a guess and say either Speyside or Highland. Mm. Oh. It's it's like a Glen Morangy Quintarubin cask strength. Oh. It still leaves a lot of alcohol tingle on the sides of my tongue, even after I added all that water to it. If I add another water, would that give me any more subtle nuances, or would this just water it down? I'm curious, because this has still got a little bit of a tingle. Let's go half. Half a spoon. And there wasn't that much left now. It, it, it's already been watered down. And now we try again. <laughs> Do we get legs now? No, they sheet right down just like they did before. It's a taste like. Ah, I still haven't drowned it. There's still a lot of those dark fruits. They're not as thick and syrupy as they were, but 
they're still there. Now the tingle is not on my tongue. Now I've brought it down to a, a tame drink, drinking strength. This is probably a little more in the Goldilocks zone than it was before. On the nose. Yep. Dark fruits are still there, just not as strong as they were, but they're still there. Now I'm getting some vanilla from underneath there. Now I'm getting some multi caramel, but this, the fruits are still there. It's just the some multi caramel coming in from underneath. Wow. Hmm. I have been going on about this for a while, haven't I? It's incredible. Still the finish of dark fruits coating my mouth after I've had a gulp of water. Ah, oh, tell me what this is. I've been going on long, but I, I know I've been going on long. I've been criticized. I had somebody comment recently uh, that uh, he totally loved my video, and what killed him was the time it took to watch it. But he was going right along with it and tasting along with me. He had the dram on with him while I was tasting it. He was tasting it too and he was going along. He loved it. He said it was a killer video, but the length was a little much. I just responded and said, it takes what it takes. It takes how long it takes. If whiskey has taught me one thing, it is to slow down. Whiskey has taught me to slow down, not just while I'm drinking, but while I'm eating and while I'm doing everything else in my life slow down and enjoy it rather than just make it happen fast and that's what whiskey has taught me um, if anything at all this is a duff town from secret spirits duff town 11 year old single malt scotch whiskey distilled in 2008 cast type first fill oloroso 55.4 percent alcohol by volume did I say 54? I remember saying 54. Um, I was saying port, but Oloroso, I believe. Uh, I've never had an Oloroso this intense. Um, there's a cask number and a region naturally Speyside. So I guess the Speyside, or Highland or Speyside, I said. So I'm half right. I gave it 54%. I was sure of that even though something malfunctioned with the sides of my glass. And uh, I couldn't narrow it down to Dufftown, but 11-year-old single malt scotch whiskey distilled in 2008. 11-year-old, that's, that's nice. And that was day number 11. Well, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. I have not had such an intense Speyside experience in my entire life to date. Maybe because other Speysiders didn't have so much intensity like this one did. Wow. Now that is a first fill Oloroso. You can take all those others. You can take Glendronic 18. You can take uh, Deanston 18. You can take uh, um, Glen Grant. I haven't had Glen Grant 18 yet, though. Um, uh, what's the other one? McAllen. You can take all of those. And they pale, the ones that I have tried anyway, they pale by comparison to this. This is just amazing stuff. Slanchava. 